Hey there, fellows. We decided we shouldn't delay this any further. So recently you would have seen us making a set of wooden pistons. That engine was even able to start and run. But it is still very much in need of... Some work needs to be done to it to make it solid. And so an idea occurred to us. Now why should you visit a specialized shop and pay big rubles when in the olden days they used to make everything work right in the garage? And so just like back in the day, we're looking to spend a minimum amount of money on reanimating this engine. So the first order of business. The pistons will have to wait for now. First, we have to tend to the severely warped cylinder head. We tried fitting it with one gasket, and we saw massive coolant leakage. We of course found emulsion inside the engine, and so some water was most definitely finding its way inside. Yeah, it was getting into the oil and into all places imaginable. And that's not a great situation. And so the head is due for some grinding. So I was looking into how you can do it. And there's a ridiculous number of options. Some even use a jointer plane. We don't have one of those. But there is another popular method. You basically take a big sanding stone. And for the next few days, you're pretty much dying while grinding that damn head. But then I saw this other thing. How a few guys found a rather elegant solution. So they took something along the lines of glass or stone maybe with some sandpaper. Then they found a motor just like the one I've got right here. Mine is for powering windshield wipers. But so they had a motor, a lever, a plate. And they dragged the head back and forth over that sandpaper. It being electric, it did all the work. Giving everybody the opportunity to just go do whatever they needed to. While the head was being ground down. Anyway, so I've already taken the liberty of tearing down the engine. We've got that electric motor right here. It's actually quite powerful. It is not something you'll be able to stop with your bare hands. And so now, we need a level surface to work on, on top of which we are going to place a pane of glass, which we in turn cover with sandpaper. We secure it all, place the head on top, attach the link, fit the motor, do the wiring for it, and after that we let it rock the head back and forth and grind it down. Now why don't we get everything up and running, after which we tend to the pistons? Let's do this. Summer is just around the corner, fellows, and so we're adding some new stuff to our summer collection of Garage 54 merch. You already know that we have t-shirts, as well as straight brim baseball caps, which we're now complementing with these new ones that have a sort of bendy brim, to provide you with something that's comfortable to wear and stylish, for you to rock when the summer finally rolls around. Also, don't forget that aside from the t-shirts and the baseball caps, we have mugs, license plate frames, not to mention this awesome Cybertruck puzzle that we offer. You'll find all the links in the video description. Feel free to head on over and grab yourself something. Can you resurface a cylinder head using sandpaper? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out, fellows. We've prepared our grinding table. We put down the glass and sandpaper layers. Using a few clamps, we gently fix the sandpaper in place to keep it from getting displaced. All of this you can easily do all by yourself. Here we've welded a few tubes, and here we have a windshield wiper motor with its respective drive mechanism. We had to replace one of the head studs. Got a different nut on there. This nut and bolt we welded together. It all fits perfectly to this link, which has a ball joint in it to allow for a bit of play. We attach the link, screw the nut on, and that's it. This is something even a first grader can easily put together. Now look here. I'd like to show you exactly why the situation is what it is. Here you can see that the head was beaten by all of those tiny bits and pieces. You've even got craters on the cylinder head. This we won't even try to rub out, given its depth of about 1.5 millimeters. What we need to do is this. Since we were unable to tighten it down, and the coolant was leaking out, this tells us that the head is warped. If we rub it over a flat surface, we'll immediately see those spots where the sandpaper starts to eat its way into the metal. And those places where the material stays intact, that's where the deformity is at. Allow me to demonstrate this for you. 
The pliers are gone, no surprise. This isn't particularly easy, with me also having to hold the table. Now we flip the head. And here's what we're looking at. The area around the spark plug wells is all nice and even. We see some scratches around the edges. But if you look at the middle, it came into slight contact around here. But here and here you have nothing. Nothing in the middle. So right here I have the head gasket that we installed. Since it was only for 10 minutes we did use a sealant. Now when pouring in water, as soon as it goes through these channels, it immediately begins to leak from underneath the head and drip down the engine block. Now this tells us that the cylinder head is warped. After giving it a quick rub, you can see that here something is happening, while here the metal is completely unscathed. That glass is naturally as smooth as it gets. The problem is you can't use a really thin glass. You need at least 5, 6, 7, 8 millimeters. Those pieces are small but smooth. Now when a cylinder head gets warped, it is very difficult to straighten it back out again. Right, so this is the setup we are running. We've got this link attached. We had to bring the bolt a bit lower than it used to be. Thing is that before it felt as if the head was hopping. The electric motor will be running at relatively low speed. Alright, let's get to it. Let the machine do its thing. There we are. Now we allow this high-tech process to run its course. We, in the meantime, will tend to other errands. I can hear it squeaking. Okay, I see. Okay, now it's quiet. I'll apply a bit here, just in case. Lovely. Let's have a look at the pistons. This looks pretty gruesome. And we'll have to install the factory pistons, which we still have. Here they are. All accounted for. But the rings are gonna be a problem. You might recall that in cylinder number three, the upper compression ring crumbled to pieces. It is no more. There is one con method we can use. I mean, we are assuming that we are doing the job without leaving the garage. So we'll leave the exact same oil rings that are meant to be fitted to this engine. And as for the compression rings, well... So over there... We've got an assortment of random metal bits, including some pipe. Now why not use that to make us some piston rings? Then we put everything together, get the pistons assembled, install everything into the engine, start it and look to see whether it's able to run. I take it that we're most likely good here, all around. You've got this stuff, the metal shavings that the sandpaper took off. There seems to be a lot of it in there. Okay then. Time to disconnect this. Putting it back will be easy if we need to. And the moment of truth. Oh, this looks great. The entire surface has been shaved. Exceptionally fantastic. And so now, all of those craters, as you can tell, this deep one right here hasn't gone anywhere, though. But it had to be at least 
one and a half millimeters deep. I don't think it'll be that big of a problem. So now we install some finer grain sandpaper and uh, refine the surface. Make it even smoother, leaving us not necessarily with a mirror finish, but at the very least, those will be some fine scratches. Let's do this. So here's the situation, fellas. While that wonderful machine of ours was running and resurfacing the cylinder head, we replaced the sandpaper with a finer grain to smoothen out the surface. And we are looking good. Hopefully this works. Anyway, so while it was running, we machined us some piston rings, using essentially a few blanks as the raw material. We couldn't find the appropriately sized pipe, but we do have metal. And we machined these from a whole chunk of it. They seem to be a pretty good fit for the cylinders. Place it in there, press it down with a piston. Those clearances are excellent. It's all good. Now I do see some sort of gaps in there, but I do think those will wear away, and the whole thing is gonna work. Okay, let's assemble the complete engine and try firing it up. Let's get to it. Okay, fellas, we're looking good. We've put the motor back together. We resurfaced the head using a homemade machine, so we've got that aspect covered. We've poured in some water, and there are no apparent leaks. We got those steel piston rings in there, too. And now the interesting part. Let's try this out. What? The ether. Yeah, we can give that a try. What's going on? We can't fire it up using the starter. Now, we just did a compression test, and the situation is quite interesting. Either the piston rings have shrunken, or they aren't pressed up against the cylinder walls. The compression... How do I put this? There is none. And so here is what we'll do about this. We're gonna park two cars next to each other to connect their axle shafts to one another. So we're basically gonna use the second car to give this engine a slight boost. One engine will spin the other up via the gearbox, though the power is gonna have to go through the whole transmission. But we don't care. Our only goal is to get this engine to run. We have to find some way to make this work. Curious to see what happens. I am not 107% sure about this, but 100%? Yeah. And so, with the help of such a weird method, we've connected the two axle shafts through a lot of joiner, Let's man our positions and let her rip. See where we get with this. Release the clutch. Okay, I see the bolts have gone for a stroll. And so we've welded on a proper universal joint. It is ever so slightly crooked, but we'll try starting it anyway. Now this is way better. Go for it.
It can't handle it? Try second gear, maybe? Or perhaps it should have less trouble that way. Something's happening. Let's keep going. Some more, please. It is not happy. <laughs> yeah, we probably should adjust the ignition. Oh, my ears are ringing. Broke off? Really? Things were going okay, the car started and ran, but it won't fire up on the starter motor. We have gotten it to run a couple of times, so the oil has to have made it to wherever it needs to be. We should be seeing some compression, though it ain't all the way there yet, evidently. Our bridge has also been compromised. Okay, we welded it back together, and let's try starting it again. Don't drop the clutch, okay? It's running on its own, without any assistance. We should bring the idle up. It keeps stalling. What matters is the engine started, it ran, so that's a good thing. And that does it for this exceptionally tremendous experiment, fellas. We assembled this engine. And granted, it isn't too enthusiastic to start from the starter motor. I mean, you did see what sort of piston rings we've gotten there. Made from ordinary steel, which we machined on a lathe. In any case, using that bridge setup we cooked up, where one car is helping the other one start, the engine actually does fire up. It's even able to hold idle. And after a few adjustments, I reckon this will be gold. So I'd say this worked just fine. We made that machine for resurfacing the cylinder head, and we didn't see anything pouring out or contaminating the oil. So everything is good and well. Everything we came up with in this episode seems to have worked. And that's all I have for you fellows. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.